Good day and welcome back. Today I have an exciting video for those of you who have trouble with overwatering, underwatering. If you have to have your plants auto watered for a length of time, like if you're going away to a get together or something and you're going to be gone for a week, you need your plants auto watered. This first part in my uh, video about the self watering planter. I mentioned the capillary mat. I've got a new capillary mat here and it comes with a liner to line your table or whatever you're putting it on and the instructions. Lay out the polyethylene underlay sheet onto the greenhouse bench or conservatory table. Place the watering mat on top, making sure that there are no lumps or bumps. Cut the mat to fit the bench or table. There must be no excess mat hanging over the edges. Thoroughly soak the mat and rub over the whole surface with the flat of your hand. Soak again. Place your plant pots without the saucers on the mat. Water all your plants from the top to start the capillary reaction. That's the same as uh, pre-soaking your potting mix before you put it in. When using clay pots or pots with extremely concave bases, it may be necessary to insert a small piece of matting into the hole at the base of the pot as a wick to assist the capillary reaction. And as for the depth that it can uh, wick up from, this diagram here says it has a maximum of a 4 inch lift. Take this and we're going to make a self watering or auto watering system right here on this level of my shelf here. First you need of course something to put your watering in. So while we're waiting for them to warm up, this is going to go here as a shelf. I've marked three and a half inches down here. And I will put these triangular pieces of plywood on here and then put my 2 by stock on top of that. Use an extra hand, you can never have too many clamps. I have a hole pre-drilled here. I only need the one the one screw in each side because it's basically just to hold this in place, not to hold it down. And this overhang, I'm wondering if a bigger shelf will be better so I'm going to leave it for now and just use this with my containers that I've got to use for now I'm going to use these 
has water holders for now. This one I don't have a top for. So, true to form, I have to improvise. Not gonna be able to do it that way. Maybe this way. Now, to you, uh, you cut holes in this. If you want to do it this way, this is a apple juice bottle, you see, and a cranberry cocktail, just from your average grocery store. But when I'm cutting this out, I'm going to leave a little bit of a lip inside. I'm not going to cut the whole side right out because that little bit of lip will give that uh, strength when water goes in there, it won't spall out on you. Knife will be better. That's really all you need. You don't need a big huge opening. I have to check that hole on top here to make sure it's not open and there is a little space so now I can put more glue in there to make sure it plugs off. This is just one of your basic uh, aluminum baking pans that you buy at your grocery store for your one time use aluminum. Now I've got to remove all of these. Just had to pause the camera because I had to figure this out. Put this board on here and a screw in the center here and one in the center here because if you don't, you know what's going to happen. When you're walking by, this is going to be bumped. They're going to go on the floor and water everywhere. So let's continue. Now remember, it said it can't have any mat hanging over the edge. In which case, you're better off having it shorter than your table rather than longer. If it's shorter than the table, it can't hang over. Now. On this diagram, you see they have this wick coming up and it goes underneath the mat. 
For this wick material, it's only a piece of the mat. So, I'm going to do something a little different. Like that, no need of having the extra wick running under and causing a lump in your material. Now remember, as it said, it, this needs to be pre-soaked. Too much work. I'm just going to pour water on it. Two liters of water. Now, as you can see, it's fairly soaked. So I wipe all this water now towards the containers. and we'll fill up the containers. What I want to show you here is the planter set up for putting them on that wicking mat. When you have your normal professional pots like this, they usually have a hole, several holes, right at the lowest point of the pot. This is a regular nursery pot. This is one from uh, President's Choice uh, Geranium. It's just an annual pot and it too has a hole down closest to the bottom. And even when you get to the bigger pots they have holes close. So when we take our soil we drop a bit in the bottom and make sure it's packed down right into the bottom of the pot so that it comes very close. See when this sits on the wicking mat now that will be in contact with the moisture. And then the rest you don't have to pack it in tight, you just put it in and tap it down. And then whether you're planting a plant in there or a seed, whatever. I don't have a planter with a convex bottom with the hole in the center. 
can get some of these. So I made one. A child's beach bucket. This is. So I have this hole in the center here. And these feet, when I sit it on the wicking mat, those feet will keep that hole up from the center. So if I just put soil in this, it's not going to come in contact with the moisture. So I'll take a piece of wicking mat material or wool or whatever, some good wicking material. And poke it out through the bottom. And then I can go ahead and fill up my pot. And plant as normal. And this material here now, this will always be sitting down on the wicking mat. These cups, you have a couple of options. Now it has a rim here, so you, around this <coughs> rim here, this is the lowest point. If you want to make just some little holes, just take a sharp knife, And you cut some holes right out of the that rim on the bottom. Like this. And then when you pack your soil down, it'll be good close to the bottom and come into contact with your soil, your wicking mat material. Another idea that I came up with which I'm thinking might be a good idea and especially for the little small cups like these your starter cups to take a nice sharp knife Cut the bottom right out of it. Then you lay this on a flat surface. You pack about an inch of soil in for this cup fairly firm, less for the smaller cups of course. And then the rest of the soil you can pack in lightly. Put in your seed or your transplant, whichever you're doing. Then when you pick it up, it won't fall out. If you look at the bottom, it's tight to the bottom. So it is in really good contact with your wicking material. <coughs> the only cons with this is that of course you'll get your wicking material dirty and the roots they can grow down into the wicking material. There's less of a chance of the plant getting root bound into this because like I just said, it'll grow down into the wicking material and grow outside rather than curl around the pot. The thing I'm liking about this idea is that when it comes time to transplant this, it'll be very, very easy to push this whole plug out 
not disturb the roots one iota whatsoever. In this fashion, you'll have to squish your cup to loosen up the ball. You'll be disturbing the roots. You're also damaging the cup every time. This way, I can handle the cup much more gently, and this should last practically forever, really. You see? just like that. So whichever way you want to do it, cut the entire bottom out or cut your holes. Like I say, these I wouldn't suggest modifying it just because it's already a professionally made thing and the holes are close to the bottom. I would leave them just as they are. But for your homemade cups, I had a seed put in there. Oh, he's still in there. I have the bottom cut out of those. That's my plan. And now I've finished it all and I've returned all 42 cups to the uh, shelf. And I've got this extra room here. That's enough for another three rows or 18 cups. Now, the advantage to doing this, the one, of course, is as you already seen, you don't need the trays to water your plants. You don't need to put them in a tray, and so you just lay them here, and they you have much more space because you don't have to tray walls. The soil in these cups that will remain moist, not soaked, but moist. When you water them and then let them dry out, you're getting the soil so soaked dry, soak dry. This just stays moist and the plants just keep growing. The only thing you have to do is come by every day or every so often and top up your water containers here. You don't have to worry about, okay, pick them up or they, do they need to be uh, watered or anything. You don't have to worry about that. Just As long as there's water in your water containers, the plants, all those plants on top of this mat, will have enough moisture. This is the style now for using this capillary mat and laying out your cups on top. I have another uh, method that I've already alluded to on me using the small cups for an experiment and uh, also sprouts as Kevin on VW Family Farms would say, free 90 free. So you'll be interested in watching that, I'm sure. I'll end this video with just this mat, and I'll see you in the next video.